South Africa. As Africa, we need, we need to implement energy solutions that are socially, environmentally, and economically um, acceptable. Did you know that there are half a million metric tons of nuclear waste temporarily stored at hundreds of sites worldwide? In the U.S. alone, one in three people live within 50 miles of a storage site. No country has yet successfully disposed of commercial spent nuclear fuel, but it's not for lack of a solution. So what's the delay? The answers are complex and controversial. In this series, we explore the nuclear waste issue with people representing various pieces of this complicated puzzle. We hope this podcast will give you a clearer picture of nuclear waste, the whole story. Opinions expressed by the interviewers and their subjects are not necessarily representative of the company. Hello, I'm Jessica Chow, Deep Isolation Technical Marketing Analyst and a Nuclear Engineer. My guest today is Princess Mutambeni, a Nuclear Communication Specialist from South Africa and winner of the 2021 Woman in Nuclear Global Excellence Award. Her career has focused on addressing the socioeconomic issues of the African continent through promoting the peaceful uses of nuclear science and technology. Welcome, Princess. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Jessica. Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. And hi to your viewers. Great, thanks. So we always like to start by asking, how did your career path lead you to work on and support nuclear energy? Well, um, my journey in the nuclear industry is, is a bit interesting. <laughs> and it's interesting in such that it's not something that I planned. I learned it in the nuclear industry by mistake. <laughs> and uh, by mistake, because I received a call from the recruitment agency to say, you have an interview in this company in which you need to go to as in tomorrow. Then I went to this organization and I found myself in the village. <laughs> then as I got into the village and I'm told that it's a nuclear industry and something that really I have never heard of before, but um, as, as really, as soon as I arrived, I started working there. I realized that uh, basically there's a lot that people do not know and, uh, and still need to be educated on. And one of them is nuclear technology. So I said to myself, you know what, I will shoulder the responsibility of taking nuclear to the people because I realized that uh, since I don't know about it, I mean, chances are, 80% of the country doesn't know anything about nuclear technology. So yeah, I decided that I am not only going to focus on developing my career, but also maybe making an impact, you know, uh, do something so that I, I, I create awareness of nuclear technology in the, in, in the South African, um, in South Africa and in the African continent at large. So that's how I became a nuclear communication specialist and also a lifelong uh, nuclear technology advocate. So South Africa is the only African country with a nuclear power plant near Cape Town. Can you tell us why having this clean source of power is important for South Africa or why it's the only African country with its own nuclear power plan? Um, yes, it is the only African country with the commercial nuclear power plant, but soon it will not just be the only country in Africa because Egypt is about to start the construction of their nuclear power plant. The, I think it's um, 4,000 megawatt nuclear power plant that Egypt is about to build, which is the major development in the African continent that deserves to be celebrated. And um, why having this technology is important in South Africa. You know, um, just like many developed nations, South Africa was able to industrialize through coal. So they built many coal power plants, which are now aging, you know, uh, by 2030, not by 20, post 2030, South Africa will be decommissioning about 20 to 24 gigawatts of um, coal power plants. And 
coal is the base load electricity. It offers the base load electricity and nuclear in South Africa. And coal offers the most um, total electricity in South Africa with nuclear just being 5%. So when these age, uh, when these coal fleets um, are being de decommissioned and they need to be replaced uh, by something else and not only uh, any technology, but the, any, any power source, but the power source that is able to offer the base load and and that uh, and stabilize the grid. So I think that it's it's important that we start as a country we start looking into the you know the solution to the aging coal fleet of which really they have been offering a lot for the country and also it's important because currently nuclear offers the cheapest electricity in the country. It's uh, per kilowatt hour cheaper than coal. So those are things that people need to know is, is, is that nuclear is when, when nuclear is also cheap in terms of um, per kilowatt hour, unlike other sources and, and, and especially the, those sources that are, are, are not base load, which are available only or are controlled by weather. So it's important that um, as, as, the, as, as South Africa, we also look into our challenges that we are facing as a country. South Africa faces the load shedding challenge, the power cuts, which are mainly due to those aging coal power plants. So if we were to actually solve the solution or solve the, 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 the load shedding in South Africa, we would need to build, uh, to introduce more uh, power source into the grid and uh, specifically the power source that is able to offer a base load electricity. And in this case, it's only nuclear because in South Africa, we do not have hydropower. Okay, we have a water scarcity problem. So we will not be able to actually uh, build a more hydropower plants, which are also valuable to, uh, you know, um, mitigating or to help contributing to reaching the net zero carbon emission. So yeah, I think that nuclear is important because right now it offers the cheapest electricity per kilowatt hour in South Africa, and also that it will be able to replace those aging coal fleets. Right, right. So what are the challenges that the nuclear industry faces in South Africa, as well as Africa as a whole, as it relates to politics, economic development, and social issues? Um, Jessica, the main challenge is the lack of knowledge it, that persists around uh, <laughs> um, nuclear technology in the industry, um, not only in South Africa, but globally. But I, I, I think that in, in South Africa and Africa, it's worse. You know, I, I'd like to say the quote by the former president of Burkina Faso, Thomas Sankara, who said, um, the enemies of people are those who keep them in ignorance. So um, yeah, I, I feel that people get away with, you know, implementing the, the, the solutions that are not socially uh, acceptable because they know that no one will hold them to account because people really, they do not have knowledge of this. Hence, I took the responsibility to educate people because I believe that when you educate people and give them inform enough information so that they are able to debate from a, you know, a, a, an informed perspective and hold the leaders account accountable and be part of the conversations when it comes to energy uh, solutions. So yeah, um, I, I think that uh, the challenge is mainly the lack of knowledge, but another challenge that we have, which basically has been perpetuated by those who are against nuclear, the anti-nuclear lobby groups, they um, have spread the information that nuclear is expensive, nuclear power plant, building nuclear power plants is expensive and uh, have done a lot in influencing policies uh, in terms of, you know, least cost, um, line that they use. So yeah, it, it's that to say Af South Africa and Africa, African countries cannot be able to afford to build nuclear power plants because they are expensive. 
of which I also find it very uh, unfair because that means uh, now people are dictating as to what energy sources that as African continent, we should be able to implement regardless of whether those energy uh, solutions that they are bringing on the table will be able to solve our problem. And uh, the, the, the most problem that I, I usually speak about is the, is the challenge of industrialization. We, as, as the African continent and as South Africa, we need to industrialize. I think uh, being comfortable uh, to be called a underdeveloped nations, it should come to an end. We should come with solutions that will also put us in the, you know, up there to say we have managed to develop as a country. So really, I think it's unfair to dictate in the African continents or African nations as to which energy solutions that they should be impl implementing. And also, I find it very strange that those who are benefiting from you know, from uh, selling these um, renewables, you know, um, solar panels and wind turbines, they have actually managed to convince African nations that and made uh, and made Africa the canvas <laughs> area uh, for their renewables uh, solutions. Of which also I find it uh, very concerning to say. It's it's fine. Why why can't we implement the energy solutions according to our you know social and um, economical challenges as the as the nations and 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 that is to come up with a an energy mix that actually include all of that and including nuclear because I believe that if we want to talk industrialization if we want to talk um, job creation, we will need to actually, yeah, industrialize as a country, we would need a base load electricity source, and, and that we can only get that from nuclear, hydropower, and, um, you know, gas, uh, since, but uh, we also need to keep in mind that gas is not available, gas infrastructure is not really available in, 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 in the African countries. Yes, countries such as Mozambique, they do have gas, but it's not fully harnessed. And in order to get that gas to reach other African countries, you would need to build a lot of infrastructure, which really is currently insufficient. So yeah, that's just my take to say, as South Africa, as Africa, we need, we need to implement energy solutions that are socially, environmentally, and economically um, acceptable. Right. So as you just said that one of the misconceptions about nuclear is that it's really expensive. So as someone whose career focuses on communicating about such a challenging and difficult topic, what have you learned are the most other common misconceptions people have about nuclear and how do you try to overcome those in the community? I think one of the famous one is that nuclear power plants are not safe. <laughs> and they base this um, on the historic events such as um, Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, Fukushima incidents. So yeah, it's also again, it's, it's people trying to push their own you know, personal agenda or, uh, yeah. But uh, what, how we try to overcome such challenges is that uh, we try to communicate, especially on, on the safety aspect of it. I mean, we, 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 we know that uh, technology evolves, all the technologies evolve and that includes nuclear. Nuclear is not immune to uh, evolving. So if we are saying that the, the technology evolves, and uh, we are going to still, you know, refer to the historic events that happened way back without even considering what, are, you know, the, the, the technology innovations that are currently being implemented. So, um, and also nuclear is, nuclear power plants are, you know, highly regulated uh, by, you know, local regulators um, over and, 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 and which are overseen by the International Atomic Energy Agency. So um, in, in terms of safety, nuclear plants or nuclear energy, nuclear power plants are highly uh, regulated. Chances of, you know, nuclear, you know, radioactive material escaping or 
being taken out of the nuclear power plant are very slim, uh, based on the security, the high you know, tech security that is there uh, in the nuclear power plants. So those are things that um, we try to communicate. And also we face an issue of uh, you know, waste, New radioactive waste is dangerous. And uh, in, in, in our communication, really, it's, I, I don't even think that when it comes to waste, we should be making such a, you know, a huge goal and considering that I, I have never heard that the nuclear waste or killed anyone anywhere, anywhere else in the world. But then we also, you know, try to, to communicate that how we, you know, how the, the, the nuclear waste is disposed in different countries, including in South Africa, uh, which is done in the Northern Cape. So those are things that we try to take to the public to say, yeah, yes, we have nuclear waste is radioactive, but there are means that are being done in order to make sure that uh, you know people and people and the environment uh, are not exposed to that radiation. So South Africa is currently temporarily storing its spent nuclear fuel. Can you update us on what the country is planning to do for? permanent disposal or like long-term disposal? Yes, um, yeah, South Africa, we have uh, a, 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 a low level waste disposal um, area, which is called Falkwoods in the Northern Cape, uh, one of the provinces in South Africa. But what has happened recently is that the government, the cabinet has approved uh, um, the central, the interim centralized storage facility, which will be built uh, actually away from Kubek and they will um, store, it, it, for a long term, they will store the, the spent fuel in there. And I think that uh, that's one of the things that actually, the, or the innovations that we should uh, be proud of as a country, uh, that at least for, 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 for now, for a long term, we are going to have this solution for the spent fuel. And um, I, I always say, the nice part about science is that um, the, science, the scientists are always hungry to, you know, to, to come up with researches and solutions and, and long-term solutions or even permanent solutions. So with regards to the nuclear waste, the permanent solution, I believe that it will be found and it, that will, it, it will happen soon. So do you think finding a permanent solution for South Africa spent fuel would help lead to an expansion of nuclear power usage in South Africa or even Africa as a continent as a whole? Well, that would be great to find a permanent solution, but it's not the only hindrance or the main hindrance uh, when it comes to nuclear development in South Africa and Africa. The, as I mentioned earlier on, the, the challenge is the issue of cost. They have really, I, I think that uh, the anti-nuclear lobby groups have moved away from, you know, focusing on nuclear waste, <laughs> but they are now focusing on the cost of nuclear to further block the development of nuclear. So yeah, it would be great to find a solution, but it's really not the hindrance when it comes to the development of nuclear in, in South Africa and in the African continent. So to help educate the public about nuclear energy in conjunction with the work that you already do for the South African government, you founded a nuclear energy series on YouTube called Africa for Nuclear under the theme, Nuclear Energy, a Nexus of Life. So what prompted or inspired you to launch the series? How do you see this form of energy being a nexus of life? Well, uh, having joined nuclear industry, I was lucky to be part of the international um, network of nuclear professionals across the world. And uh, being part of them, uh, I learned how other professionals are doing it in their own countries. And then I said to myself, I mean, Africa cannot be left behind. And then uh, th that's really when I started uh, uh, the idea of Africa for nuclear. It remained an idea until I was forced to implement it <laughs> because I happened to be part of this 
course, which was a training course for women. It says uh, women in communication science or, or yeah, something like that. It was offered by ANSTO and IAEA. I was part of it. And then we were tasked to go back to our countries and develop and implement this, you know, big awareness campaign so that uh, and, 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 implement in, and implement it in our country. So Africa for Nuclear Idea now had to come uh, to life. Uh, then I implemented or I developed, I conceptualized it and then uh, I, together with my colleagues and uh, we tried to actually, yeah, come up with nice scripts and, and all that. But uh, why I'm saying nuclear is a nexus of life, it's because it is exactly that. Nuclear is the nexus of life. We see that through many applications that are available and that are used that are used in different sectors, such as um, food and agricultural sector, medicine. I mean, we save lives using nuclear medicine. Also, in the non-destructive um, non-testing or non-detective testing, they call it that. And then we also water resources, you know, the, 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 the application of a water desalination. So those are all applications that are available in the nuclear industry. And that show that really this nuclear technology is in our life. There's one um, application or innovation that has been current, that uh, has been recently, you know, um, been, uh, found actually, it's, it's called the Rhizotope Project. They, you know, using nuclear technology or nuclear application, we will be able to save rhinos from being poached. That's just amazing, and I, I think anyone should be, you know, should look should should look out for uh, the, the the developments of that um, innovation in in, in 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 South Africa and in Africa as a whole. Uh, so yeah, that's basically why I'm saying nuclear is the nexus of life because all these applications that you find nuclear applications they prove to us that really this nuclear is what we live in every day. So yeah. average annual temperature in South Africa is predicted to increase by 4.4 degrees Celsius by 2100 if emissions aren't reduced. So how is global warming affecting the country currently? And are public concerns about the environment leading to more discussions about deploying more clean energy, nuclear or other sources? Well, Jessica, you know, climate change is already a measurable, a measurable reality, posing significant economical, um, environmental, and, um, you know, social risk and challenges, not only in South Africa, but in, uh, in the whole world globally. And um, South Africa also, like other nations, uh, has, you know, has the task of balancing the acceleration of economic growth and um, transformation. And they should do so in a manner that is environmentally acceptable so that they are able to contribute um, to help the world in reaching the net zero carbon emission carbon emissions by 2050. And uh, water has been regarded, um, you know, the primary medium through which the effects of climate change are, be, are being felt in South Africa. And that's according to the De uh, Department of Water Affairs uh, report in 2013. And they are saying the increases in um, climate variability and um, are impacting um, both water availability and water quality, and uh, through changes in rainfall patterns and um, more intense storms. So um, I, I think I will speak from the energy perspective, the industry which I'm, you know, clued up about uh, what. South Africa has done in terms of addressing the issues of child, uh, of climate change. In 2019, they gazetted what is called the Integrated Resource Plan, which is a you know an energy master plan for the country. And uh, that IRP, uh, in short, we call it IR, IRP. IRP, uh, South African IRP, actually uh, calls for a balanced energy mix that includes uh, nuclear renewables uh, and gas and, and others. And uh, so more and more renewables are being introduced to the grids. And as I mentioned earlier on, 
the coal fleet is aging and it will be decommissioned post 2030. And uh, the plans are to actually replace those um, uh, coal power plants with um, either nuclear gas or renewables. So we will see. Perfect. Is there anything else like you'd like to tell our viewers today about your work that you've been doing or any new initiatives you're starting? Um, I'd like to invite them to come and follow us on social media, Africa for Nuclear. We are on TikTok, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on YouTube. And uh, I can assure you that we are planning uh, nice things. We are planning exciting things going forward as Africa for Nuclear. We will be introducing television. We'll be introducing outreach programs in the whole of African continent. We'll be introducing CSI, social investment programs so yeah lots and lots of exciting stuff is going to happen and i'm inviting them to come and be part of this journey and yeah and and, and be part of the conversations as well because we do need uh, nuclear professionals to be able to you know respond on our behalf <laughs> well thank you so much princess for joining us today Thank you so much, Jessica, for inviting me. And I wish you all the best with what you're doing. It's, it's really an amazing um, initiative that you guys are involved in. We believe that listening is an important element of a successful nuclear waste disposal program. A core company value is to seek and listen to different perspectives. Opinions expressed by the interviewers and their subjects are not necessarily representative of the company. If there's a topic discussed in the podcast that is unfamiliar to you, or you'd like to more closely review what was said, please see the show notes at deepisolation.com slash podcasts.